Hi, this is Wojtek again, and today we are recording another video from the series Witnessing to Jehovah Witnesses. And today's focus of the video is uh, the heresy of the Watchtower, uh, heresy that is uh, designed to uh, lower the, our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, to the position of the angel. Uh, they um, proclaim that Jesus Christ is a Mike, Mike Archangel. So uh, let's go and start with um, with this book. Uh, this is the uh, I made a little note, but this is a, a new, if you look at this, uh, this is the new uh, book um, that is called What Does the Bible Really Teach? This is the newest book. Uh, from 2014, they used to have one just like it in a di little different uh, cover, but uh, uh, they haven't previously now have new new look of this book. And if you go to the very um, almost last page, to the page 218, to the page 218, you'll find a little article that calls that is uh, called. Uh, who is Michael the Archangel? And we go and read and we find this. The Bible indicates that Michael is another name for Jesus Christ. The Bible indicates before and after his life on earth. Uh, and then it says, God's word refers to Michael the Archangel and then this term means a chief angel. Notice that Michael is called the archangel. This suggests that there's only one such angel. This is true. Michael, uh, Bible calls Jesus Christ the one and only. The one and only Son of God. A special there's no one like him and they try to apply that this is nobody else but Michael so since they say that Bible says that Michael is the one and only uh, let's go to uh, to New World Translation New World Translation uh, Bible Bible the New World Translation Holy Scripture uh, from from the year 1961 1961 and uh, this is the only scripture that I found that actually because then they changed this a little bit uh, but I'll go on that later and then in Daniel Daniel 9 uh, sorry Daniel 10 verse 13 we find this statement and look Michael, one of the foremost princesses, came to help me, and I, for my part, remain at Derby's and goes on. But did you notice, Michael, one of the foremost, one of the foremost princesses, came to help me, which indicates Michael is one of, one of many. Uh, Archangel Gabriel, for example, that's another one. Uh, Archangel Satan, the fallen one, is another prince. But um, so Michael is not the one and only. Uh, let's go to uh, same uh, same uh, scriptures, uh, the Watchtower scriptures, the New World Translation. We go to uh, Jude, to Jude, and they actually like to bring this verse, this is Jude 9, like to bring, bring this verse to show that, to as a proof that Jesus is Michael, but look at this verse exactly. Let's read it. Verse 9, Jude. But when Michael the archangel had a difference with the devil, and was disputing about Moses' body, he did not dare to bring a judgment against him, the devil, in abusive terms, 
but said, May Jehovah rebuke you. So the prince Mike, Michael Archangel didn't dare to rebuke his equal, the devil. And that's why he declared, May Jehovah rebuke you. So uh, um, let's go to uh, let's go to to uh, Matthew Matthew ten uh, sorry Matthew four verse ten. So in Jude nine, Michael the Archangel didn't dare to rebuke angel, but look at what Jesus does to the angel. So Matthew four. Verse 10, then Jesus, uh, this is when uh, Satan was tempting him, right? Uh, after his 40 days in, in a desert without food. And then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, Jehovah your God, must uh, you must worship. And it is not, he, he sorry. Let me read one more time. One more time. The, then Jesus said to him, "Go away, Satan! For it is written, it is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is to Him alone you must render s sacred service." So Jesus rebukes Satan. Jesus rebukes Satan. Uh, we have one more uh, rebuke of uh, uh, Satan by Jesus at the. Uh, Mark, for example, Mark uh, 8, verse 33, when uh, when Jesus, uh, when Peter was, you know, trying to stop uh, Jesus uh, to go to Jerusalem and die there, and uh, he said to him, uh, he, uh, he said that he rebuked Jesus, and then Jesus re rebuked Satan in Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan. So Jesus has no problem with rebuking Satan, right? No problem. But but uh, as we just read in in Jude, Mike Angel, Mike uh, Michael Archangel didn't even dare to to uh, rebuke him. And then, if you go, that's why I brought this version, this this 1961. Uh, New World Translation of the uh, Scriptures. In 1961, translation of Jehovah Witness translation. In Hebrews 10, in Hebrews 10, uh, sorry, in Hebrews 1, Hebrews 1. This is when you open the Hebrews, right? Right here. Right here. The Hebrews, and we go just right there. Hebrews 1, verse 6. We read this, but when he again brings his firstborn, Jesus, into the inhabited earth, he says, and let all God's angels worship him. The equals don't worship the equals, equal ones. Angels are below Christ. Christ is God. Who deserves worship that's why it says the angel worship him so this is pretty much pretty much to show how heretical is their angle on who is Jesus and this is just one of the her heresies but I have fun part here now what I did I took a pretty much gospel of, of John I took a Gospel of John in, in ESV translation, and then a couple couple verses from from letters, and I went through in like in in major statements. I I try to replace whenever uh, the scriptures speak of Jesus, calling him Jesus or he or him. Uh, I replace that with Michael the Archangel. So try to see how how stupid it would even sound if you even think of what Jesus did and who Jesus is 
if it would be a Michael the Archangel. So just just listen to that. And sorry for my reading. I'm I'm Polish, so my reading must be pretty bad. But let's go and suffer a little bit. So let's go. Let's start with um, John 1, 1. And we go. In the beginning was the Michael Archangel. And the Michael was with God. And the Michael was God. Michael was Archangel was the beginning was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Michael Archangel. Without Michael was not anything made that was made. In Michael Archangel was life, and the life was the light of men. Michael Archangel, this is verse 10 now. Michael Archangel was in the world, and the world was made through Michael. Yet the world did, did not know Michael Archangel. Michael came to Michael Archangel. Michael came to, uh, to, to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But all who did receive Michael, who believed in Michael's name, gave to him, uh, gave, um, but to all who did receive Michael, uh, but to all who did receive Michael, who believed in Michael's name, Michael gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And Michael Archangel became flesh and dwelled among us, and we have seen Michael's glory, glory of the one only Son from the Father. And from Michael's Archangel fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Michael the Archangel. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's go to chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son Michael, that whoever believes in, in, in Michael should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his only son Michael into this world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through Michael Archangel. Whoever believes in Michael Archangel is not condemned but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God the Mike I Archangel. And verse 36, verse, chapter 3, Whoever believes in the name of the Mike Archangel has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Michael shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Uh, chapter 5, This was way the Jews were seeking all the more to kill Mike, Earl, Mike Archangel, because not only was Michael breaking the Sabbath, but Michael was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Okay, let's go to uh, chapter 6, verse 29. Michael Archangel answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in Michael Archangel, whom he has sent. And Michael Archangel said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So Jews grumbled about Michael Archangel because Michael said, I am the bread that comes down from the Father. Okay, verse uh, chapter 7, verse 37. 
On the last day of the feast, the great day, Michael Archangel uh, stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me, to Michael Archangel, and drink whoever believes in me. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this Michael said, about the spirit whom those who believe in Michael's archangel were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Michael archangel was not yet glorified. Of course, and never will be. And Michael Archangel spoke to them, saying, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. And again Michael Archangel spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, not, walking in dark, not, not, not walk in darkness, but will have light of life. So Michael Archangel said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, if you believe in Michael. And then, uh, here we go. So Michael Archangel again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I, Michael, am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I, Michael, am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go and out uh, go in and out and find pasture. There we go. And uh, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And one is able and no one is able to snatch them out of Michael's archangel's hand. And then we go. Michael Archangel said to her, I, Michael, am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, Michael, through though he die, he shall uh, live. And everyone who lives and abides in me, Michael, shall never die. Do you believe this? No, I don't. <laughs> That's so creepy. Very creepy. Uh, I think I, I, I got that, but one more time. And Thomas said to him, Lord, Michael, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Michael Archangel said to him, I, Michael, am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, Michael. Very creepy. Very creepy. I hope you're not getting into the scheme of, of Watchtower because they are crazy. So, uh, chapter 19. So they took... Michael Archangel and Michael went out bringing his own cross. And the, the, so listen to this. This is, this is the moment of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Even, even thinking of this heretical thought that he might be Michael is so creepy that uh, just listen to this. So they took Michael Archangel and Michael went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramic is called Golgotha. There they crucified Michael Archangel, and with him two others, one on either side, and Michael Archangel between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Michael Archangel of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, 
many of Jews read this inscription for the place where Michael Archangel was crucified were near the city. So the soldiers did the things, but standing by the cross of Michael Archangel were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, and wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. When Michael Archangel saw his mother and the disciple whom Michael loved standing nearby, Michael Archangel said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then Michael said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Michael Archangel, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I, Michael, I thirst. A jar of full, full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Michael Archangel had received the sour wine, Michael said, It is finished. And I, Michael, and Michael bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This would be blasphemies. Blasphemies. Ugh, creepy. Michael Archangel came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Michael said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and pl in place, place it in my sight. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas, uh, Thomas answered Michael Archangel, My Lord and my God. I hope you feel the sadness of it. The, the, the Watchtower is so, so creepy, so creepy. Uh, I, was, I was just also thinking like, the, the first, from their Bible, if you know, where, where it says that Michael, let me read this verse, uh, the, that was the uh, Daniel 10, uh, verse 13, it said, uh, and look, Michael's, Michael, the one of the four most princesses, where there is multiplicity of those angels, those princesses. Though I was trying to show that Michael is not the one and only. But but even even look at this, and if we change Michael to Jesus, how would that sound? That that's creepy. Look and look, Jesus, one of the four most princesses, came to help me. That would be creepy. Let's go to Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, let's, let's see if we change Christ for, for Michael, how that would sound. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Michael Archangel, called to be saints together with all those who in every place called upon the name of our Lord Michael Archangel both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Mike and Archangel. Creepy. How about this? Philippians 1.21 For to me to live is Mike Archangel, and to die is gain. Ugh. Therefore, God has highly exalted, exalted Michael Archangel and bestowed on Michael the name that is above every name, so that the, at the name of Michael Archangel every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Michael Archangel is Lord, to the glory of the God, the Father. Ugh, creepy. Let me give you a couple more and that's it. That's sick. Uh, and Michael, and this is Colossian, and Michael Archangel 
is before all things, and in Michael Archangel all things hold together. And Michael Archangel is the head of the body of the church. Michael Archangel is the beginning, the firstborn of the firstborn from the dead, that in everything Michael might be permitted, permanent. For in Michael Archangel all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Michael Archangel to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or on he in heaven, making peace by the blood of Michael's cross. Uh, and one more, just last. I, Michael, and the, am the Alpha and the Omega. That's Revelation. I am the, I, I'm Michael, am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. When I saw him, I fell at Michael's archangel's feet, as though dead, but Michael laid his hand on me, saying, For fear not, I, Michael, am the first and the last, and the living one. I, Michael, died, and behold, I, Michael, am alive before me forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Dear friends, Watchtower is a false prophet is a cult and 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 uses the heresies to mislead people to guide them to destruction repent of your sins put your faith in jesus christ the second person of the trinity the true lord god and savior jesus christ Forget this Michael Archangel. He is the angel of Christ. He is not the Christ. Trust Jesus alone. Don't believe in those 144,000 heretical doctrines of Watchtower. You can be saved. You can be saved yourself and you can go to heaven. Not only 144,000. You don't need to go to any imagination of, of paradise on, on earth. There's not such a thing. This is a, this is a lie of the watchtower. They try to misguide you, to, to lead you to destruction. Let, let, let me read you from, from uh, John 1, from John 1. Um, we were just reading, but that was this, this crooked way of reading. But let me just read this to you. Th this is what you need to understand. You are told you cannot become a child of God and, and go to heaven because you are the part of the, 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 the sheep, those, the, the flock. And only those anointed one are the children of God. This is not true. Every believer in Jesus Christ must become a child. Ch I mean, without being child of God, you, you have no hope. You, there, there's nothing for you. You're still in your sins. You, you, they tell you that you are not in a covenant of, of Christ, the, 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 the second covenant, the, the covenant of Christ. They tell you that only the anointed ones are there, the 144,000. That's a lie. If that was true, you would be in your sins till you die, and the sins will remove you from... You have to be separated from God. There's no paradise on earth. There's not such a thing. There will be, the earth will be destroyed, and there will be new heaven and new earth. And... Just, just, just. Let's go here. The John one twelve says this, but to all who did receive him, the Jesus Christ, to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right.
to become the children of God. It doesn't say to only those anointed, to only those 144,000. It says to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. This is John 1.12. And then go to, let, let me read this in, in Romans 8. Romans 8 is a great chapter which, which will tell you that exactly what I mean by being a, I mean, you have to be a child of God unless you have no chance. And, and let me read this. If you go to Romans 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, and verses 9 to 17, let me read these verses. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And and if you if you don't have the Spirit of God, that means you're not saved. You need to have the Spirit of God. Because if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you become a child of God. And if you go, I, I'll read this further, but I, I'll just jump quickly to show you in, for example, Ephesians. If you go to Ephesians 1.13, there's a great place where you can find that that if you believe in, in, in Jesus Christ, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit, not only 144,000. Look, Ephesians 1.13 says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. It doesn't say 144,000. The only those who believe, those are sealed. So if you believe, you are sealed and you become a child of God, like John 1, 12 tells us. And then let's go and read the Romans 8. So if you are sealed, look at this. Romans 8, 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. He speaks to believers. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. So if you are not sealed by the Spirit, you don't belong to Christ. So you must be separated from God. And verse 10, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is and you have a spirit eternal. Don't believe the falsities they tell you that the spirit dies when body dies. No, you have eternal life in your spirit, which gives you the continuation of existence. If spirits cease to exist, like they try to teach you, you are done. You cease to exist. And if God from memory of his memory recreate you, you, you just copy, you just clone, you, you're not the same one. You need continuation and only continuation is poss possible if the spirit that is in you keeps on living. But they tell you this is false. But what they tell you is false. Don't believe them. This exactly tells you that you need the spirit that lives in you. Let me go back and read verse 10. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So you must have Spirit in you to be led by Him to become a son of God. And we just read in John 1.12 that all those who believe in Him 
have right to become child of God. So you need to believe in Jesus Christ, that he is God who died in your place. And by his death and resurrection from the dead, paid in full for all your sins. If you believe in him, you have right to become child of God. You are sealed from Ephesians 1.13. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And you are a child of God. And it says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. If you're not, you, if, if only 144,000, you, you just, he's, you're not his. You're his enemy. For did you not, chapter, uh, verse 15, for did you not receive, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adaptation as sons by whom you cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. You see, Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. You have a spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then hers, hers of God, and follow hers with Christ, and fellow her with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him you will be glorified with Jesus Christ. You have to believe it. Dear friend, put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of the Bible, not of the New World Translation, false, baloney, crooked translation that is... Twisted and changed and no good. Don't even read this Bible. This is this is changed word. This, put your faith in Jesus Christ. Forget all this. Look, if you like what I'm what I'm showing on a video, just subscribe to my account or just. Um, uh, write this on a search box and uh, my name Wojtek W and you can find a lot of videos I have uh, recorded a lot of videos especially for Jehovah Witnesses like you that you can actually have answers uh, don't trust what I say on the videos try the try I mean, te test them what I say in the light of what Bible says just go listen to those videos I have like many this will be I think 27th video I'm gonna make more but I have 27 till now so you can go back to my first very first video and, and see who who is Jesus according to Bible what is Trinity according to Bible you can you can see what false prophecies Jehovah Witnesses proclaimed I mean there's so much in it that if you watch it, you 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 have a different view on their teaching. You 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 can judge on yourself. I'm not saying you have to. You you the one who decides. But but have two angles looking at the, the thing. So uh, so put your uh, put subscribe to your name on on YouTube or or just search for my name. Watch those videos. And, and surrender to Jesus Christ today. You can you can be saved today for eternity, and you can secure your salvation in heaven, not the hundred forty four thousand only, but you can be there too. So put your faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. Bye.